Aloha, good morning, and we're back with Daisy to the rescue today. <laughs> Although uh, we're going to talk about other people to the rescue, some of whom may be fictitious. <laughs> this morning we have Sam Campbell's local creator, and uh, and actually this show will give about a little bit of background. <laughs> the, um, we're talking about comics and creation, uh, creations um, because of the con that's coming up this weekend, right? Right, we have amazing Hawaii Comic Con coming up this Saturday, Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Just Saturday and Sunday, I thought. Saturday and Sunday. It's a two-day, right? Yeah, two-day. Okay. Um, but, well, why, why are these cons coming into Hawaii important for a local career? Well, I think it's really, it's really cool that we have all these conventions coming to Hawaii because it's, um, it helps bring creative talent and, and media to Hawaii that normally you'd have to fly to the mainland to go to. Um, what's really great about amazing uh, Hawaii Comic Con is they're very community oriented and they're really interested in um, showcasing the local creators, writers, illustrators, artists, publishers, that kind of thing. So it's really cool. Very cool. Um, <clears throat> and so they're also bringing back some local talent as well that went to the mainland and um, I think Matt Nastos. Matt Nastos, yeah. yeah. He was a Radford, I think. Uh, no. Roosevelt. I Roosevelt think. graduate. Yeah. So Matt Nastos uh, does a lot of work for Disney. Uh, if you guys ever heard of this cartoon called Phineas and Ferb, uh, he had a lot to do with that. He write, he does stuff for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I just found out he's a writer for Disney's Live and Maddie. Mm. So if you guys seen that, it's a really cool show. Cool. Okay, so if people want to see, you know, come down to the amazing Hawaii Comic Con, they can just go to the website and get tickets? Go to the website. Um, Amazing Hawaii Comic Con dot com. com and um, kids ten and under get in for free. Um, we got some information for their the passes, but everything is on the on the website. So just go take a look over there. Uh, Jimmy J and Amazing Hawaii Comic Con, great people. Um, there's a costume contest, cosplay contest. Um, we're we're just a lot of a lot of really cool people are going to be there. Cool. And then last, that's the con that last year brought Stan Lee. Yes, brought Stan Lee, yes. <laughs> so we were able to have Stan Lee Day in Hawaii. Legit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Well, let's get to, um, let's talk about you and your creations. So what's the hardest thing about being a local creator? Oh, hardest thing about being a local creator? Just in general, finding a job to do this kind of stuff here. That's next to impossible. Um, but, uh, you know, the good thing is we live in a time right now where we can go online and we have an uh, international audience just like that. So basically, whereas before you'd have to leave Hawaii to go to the mainland to get a job or career or whatever, you can actually just do it from your house or your cell phone right now and everything's available. But it's just a mindset that a lot of people have to understand that we're not just, um, you know, landlocked in, in Hawaii, surrounded by the ocean anymore. We have a global audience, and a lot of people don't know that, and that's kind of what I like to do at these conventions is to let people know. Hmm. Why don't you tell me a little bit about these characters, like for this guy in front of me? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Pineapple Man is a uh, superhero. Um, he was at one time Hawaii's own superhero, and I created him when I was 14 years old as a joke. And uh, years later, as an adult, I was thinking about working for Marvel Comics and decided to, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to move to New York because I love Hawaii. I like where I'm from, and why do I have to leave here? So one of the guys had made a comment on, oh, that this guy's a pineapple. I'm like, okay, we're going to do pineapple. And um, I met a bunch of local publishers. Uh, this guy, Richard Dominguez from Texas, he has this superhero called El Gato Negro. And this other guy, John Proudstar, who had a Native American superhero team called Tribal Force. So I talked to these guys and asked them why they did that. And they said, well, we wanted to make comics because when growing up, they didn't have anybody of their culture representing them. So I thought, well, if these guys are doing it and they did such a good job doing it, then maybe I should come home and do something like this. So when I came back here and I was trying to figure out what to do, and uh, my wife was telling me, well, you need to dig up uh, your old comic book, Pineapple Man, and do it. And I thought nobody would want to read something about this. And she's like, no, you should do it. And she convinced me to do it. And we came up with a better storyline to make it a little bit more mainstream. And I guess the rest is history. Cool. So you actually have comic books about Pineapple Man. Right. We, we did a, a print run in the mid to late 90s. And uh, we only did like four... Uh, large regular print books and then I got really busy working for the University of Hawaii and working in Hollywood and I wasn't able to continue the story so here we are 20 years later and there's still a demand and people still remember Pineapple Man and it it just blows my mind 
So I'm working on a graphic novel. Uh, it's a year behind schedule. I'm very sorry to everybody. Thank you for supporting us. It's coming. <laughs> I promise it's coming. Uh, just life gets in the way, and it's on my brain every day when I wake up and the last thing when I go to sleep. But, but we are working on it, and it's looking really good. Um, I'm collaborating with a local uh, digital artist named Napool Ahina, and she's handling the colors, and it makes it um, looking really good. So that should be out hopefully soon. Uh, it'll be a graphic novel. It'll be on available online and at the local stores. And yeah, at the hopefully at the next uh, whatever comic convention that we're at here in Hawaii. So. Cool, very exciting, and I certainly know the anxiety that comes with trying to create something and then all these deadlines and deadlines, life, deadlines. Life, yeah, life happens. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about these other things in the middle. Oh uh, well, what we got here is so you're asking me about being a, a uh, creative person in Hawaii. What's it take? Um, you know, perseverance for one. Um, I've been really lucky. I work for a company called Casey Hoy, and I get to design fun products and souvenirs and stuff like that. Uh, Casey Hoy has a huge um, product base line, and I think we're like looking at over 7,000 different products. Wow. Uh, what I have here are, are examples of some of the recent things that we put out. Some that you know I got I designed. Like we have these uh, these new custom surfboards that are Those really cool. Made in America. Uh, we're famous for our dashboard dolls. So this is uh, one that I designed. It's a, a hula dancer. Um, these are mini tikis that another designer, um, Manny. <laughs> I can't remember his last name right now. Oh my God, he's gonna kill me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Well, this is what local creators do, right? To yes. pay the bills. Um, and that's a, we have local creators creating local yeah. items. Manny Salvador. That's his name. Manny Salvador. He's a great designer. He does the guy, everything he does is it's amazing what he what he creates. And these are just some of the items that he's done and I really like these these characters. So we have the great opportunity to create fun things, momentums. They're not just, I mean, we're able to pay our bills and stuff for it, but what's great is somebody can take this home and they're going to remember, you know, their time that they spent in Hawaii or they can bring a gift back uh, to their family and friends. And, or if they have this on their, on their car or on their dashboard as they drive. <laughs> like a you poor know. Uber driver. Yeah, <laughs> poor yes, guy. like the poor Uber driver. <laughs> that guy. wasn't one of ours though, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like the, the Uber driver. But, you know, hopefully somebody's <laughs> driving somewhere in Minnesota freezing their coli off and right. they look at this this thing and they go, oh, this I remember. This poor viral um, video. Right. About this poor Uber driver harassed so about this hula doll. It which is was a, beloved is, to so many people. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it is a business, <laughs> but <laughs> we get the opportunity to help share Hawaii and create memories that last a lifetime, hopefully. But since you're asking Very about true. products, this is a, a new product that we got out. It's a hand sanitizer. We have a whole line of them. And those are big now. These are really big now. Very important. <laughs> uh, um, there's something that's really popular on the on the web right now, and you know you guys are familiar with this term. I have a pen, you know, and I have a pineapple. Well, bam, pineapple pen. <laughs> so we made this not knowing that this was going to be a trend. I what? <laughs> yeah. So if you guys are interested in having a pineapple pen, uh, go to caseyhawaii.com. Uh, designed by yours truly. Designed in Hawaii. <laughs> pineapple pen. Right. What okay. local creators create exactly <laughs> to pay the bills. I, I had no, I had no plot and plan, but it would have been nice if we'd like a pineapple head pen, but maybe later. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Well, I think do we have to go to break yet? Yeah. Let's right, go to cool. break, and then we will be back with Stacy to the rescue in a few. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama, and I'm from Kalihi Palama. Spent 20 years in Tokyo, Japan came back after the great earthquake. I s watch Think Tech all the time and hope everybody follows it on the internet because it is a program that is devoted to the future of Hawaii and brings all concerned citizens together to create a better society for all. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me.
<laughs> Go like this. Aloha, good morning. We're back with Stacy to the rescue, although we're talking about other rescuers. <laughs> I'm here today with Sam Campbell, local creator, and we're talking about um, the con that's coming up and why is it, why are these cons important to the greater community and what kind of good things happen? Good things happen. Well, um, it's uh, what she's talking about is Amazing Hawaii Comic Con. That's this Saturday, October 8th and 9th. Um, what's good about it? Or yeah, well, actually, what happened at the last con? There was a super touching story. A super touching story. And I know. Oh, okay. Um, um, auntie. So I have a, I have a hui. I'm going to talk about this. I have, I have two hui's that I got. One is called the Hawaii Comic Book Alliance. And basically, we have a bunch of artists from across the state and some... Hawaii residents that are out of the state that are publishing and basically I put together this group um, featuring like the uh, Christopher Cavallo's, the Almakua, mm -hmm. um, local heroes, local superheroes local and we just have like a lot of books you know Pepe and Exilion and and uh, just a lot of really cool stuff and basically I, I put together a hui where we can support each other because uh, around the time when I was doing my comics there was no information there was nothing and um, I just wanted to share my experience with these local creators. And also, um, while I was making a comic book alliance, I also made a hero alliance. And what you're talking about is the, a guy put a call out called Heroes for Nainoa, and he was looking at getting cosplayers because his son had um, some really hardcore cancer going on. The kid was like four years old, and um, they wanted heroes. So, I have a I have a, a group called the uh, Hawaii Hawaii Heroes Alliance, and I basically formed that so we can uh, attend events, charity events for like you know children, veterans. You know the mission is to basically spread goodwill and aloha, and uh, this was one of the times that we we got to do that, and we went down there to their house, and we got to spend some time with them and and the family, and it was pretty good. And last I heard, and I know is is doing pretty well, so. Yeah. Mm. Good. yeah, it's very touching. Um, there was a little boy who, I guess his auntie brought him to the con or something like that. And, but she was uplifted by just being around all these creative people dressed up, having fun. Right. And, and that's one thing that I think is very important, um, that, you know, you need to have fun in life. Otherwise... Life <laughs> is too <laughs> short. Life right. is definitely too short. We need to have fun. Um, these events coming to Hawaii, they help showcase that. They help... Uh, bring these things that we love and we grew up and we admire it too and, and a lot of people you know they think in life why well, I should do that but there's an excuse there's an excuse and doubt doubt is what kills a lot of people doubt is what stops you from doing this um, yeah I and mean, there's reasons for it but I can't tell you from a personal point of view it's really important to do these things they're not easy they're brutal and they kick my butt all the time but what's, what blows me away is I have things like this helmet right here that um, a, a former student of mine went and made on his own. Um, I got the other artists in the Alliance that they're there because they're familiar with my work and they, they know my, my ethics and, and they give me fan art and that blows me away. Just the fact that um, just doing something to take care of myself is able to um, help I don't know, people feel better or good about themselves. Oh, hey. Um, hey, <laughs> it's Stacey. About your face. <laughs> and we get, and we get to share these things. So what, we, what you're looking at the right dragonfly. now is, is Dragonfly, which is uh, something that I returned to Hawaii to do. And um, when I, I, moved, I had worked in Hollywood for a while, and I made a really good living at it, but it wasn't home. So when I decided to come back home, the question was, well, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do now? Mm -hmm. And somehow... Mm -hmm. I was working with uh, Jam Productions, and we're doing the Kikaida uh, events, and just looking at people excited and happy. I thought, well, and we should do something like that. And uh, I put together a production package, a bunch of casts. We designed some things. We worked with a local company called Rapid Technology, and we were the first people to put together 3D prototype costumes uh, for a production ever that actually made it out there. And um, my, my goal was to pull the talent from Hawaii, the local people, the actors, the designers, the camera people, and put together a production. Because Steven Spielberg had said once when they came over here to shoot the Indiana Jones movie that the costs were really prohibitive because they have to bring all these people in. And there's no uh, sustainable industry here at that time. Um, around the time I moved back, ABC started a production called Lost, and you guys know how that's going, Hawaii Five O. And what I like about them is they're bringing in a lot of mainland actors, but they also pull from the local uh, talent pool as well, and they showcase Hawaii in a 
a mainstream thing, which is what we were trying to do with uh, Dragonfly. And Dragonfly was um, based on the tokusatsu Japanese superhero shows, but everything was shot in Hawaii, made in Hawaii, and about people in Hawaii. And um, what I like about it is what uh, pisses Hollywood off, <laughs> I hate to say this, but that people in Hawaii actually aren't half-naked savages running around barefoot. Uh, uh, it kind of freaked them out to give them a uh, presentation of um, local people, uh, non, your non-typical leading person uh, as, a, as a lead role. And we had a, um, a very talented guy from Hawaii named Cole Haribe, who is uh, clearly Asian, but born in Hawaii. And he kind of represents, you know, the local culture. Everybody in the cast represents, to me, what um, a good majority of um, Hawaii's people are like. What we have right now is you're looking at uh, some of the footage that we put together for our demo reel uh, for Dragonfly. So these conventions that come to Hawaii, they're really great because we're able to showcase um, local things or give, you know, they, they, they're looking at, especially a, a amazing Hawaii Comic Con, they're looking to connect with the community. They, they want to make something that's fun that people look forward to and come every year. And one of the things that they are doing is they support the creative people like the amazing Comic Book Alliance, but they're also giving me a platform here where I can share this experience of trying to create a series in Hawaii and um, show the rough cut episodes that we put together. Now to give everybody a heads up, what we are going to show is not very polished, but the message that I want to give to people in Hawaii is, yeah, you can do this. You can, you can create something. You have an idea that you want to do? get together. The best advice I ever got was from Tom Cruise and what he told me was be where you love to be, surround yourself with people that you love and admire and that's what I did when I put together this uh, this deal uh, for Dragonfly. And you know we, we did it with basically hardly any money and we shopped it around and um, like I said what I'm gonna show at Amazing this weekend uh, is not the most polished thing, but I really want people to come away with it going, well, I can do something, or I can do better than that. Whatever it is, I, I really need to stress upon people that, like Stacey said earlier, life is too short, let's be happy. So do something that you love to do, and, and thanks to Amazing, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Share the stories that you think are important, you know, and to, I, I know both of us feel that way about Hawaii, right? Hawaii's got a lot of talent. Um, I know people are probably interested in what you said about Tom Cruise. Maybe you can share with them a little bit about your background. Oh, okay. Um, comic books the, um, led me into storyboard art. Uh, I used to train with this guy, Jason Scott Lee. You guys ever heard of who that is? Jason had a, a movie he was working on with Kurt Russell, and they wanted to change the fights. And part of the way in Hollywood with the politics, there's a hierarchy. And, and if you have an idea that you want to change, you have to show what you can do better. So they tasked me with the, the job of helping them choreograph uh, better fight scenes and drawing the storyboards for them. And I had like maybe 18 hours to do it before they flew to the mainland. And anyways, long story short, they loved it. It got accepted and it opened a door for me um, to do other storyboard stuff. And because of my background with uh, design work and martial arts, I was able to do more fights for movies. And what's cool is if they wanted me, they would just hire me from Hawaii and they would fly me up there because it's like a six hour commute. So I was able to do that and eventually I moved up there. And one of the experiences was I, I ended up working on this movie called Collateral with Tom Cruise. And uh, I actually had a chance to sit and talk to him one day where we're filming this uh, nightclub scene. And we talked about Hawaii and Japan and martial arts. And he asked me how I liked it in LA. And one of the things he told me was that, that piece of advice, you know, because if you're lucky, you make it. If you're not, you know, at least you, you're trying to do something. Mm. So. I think that's very good advice. Crazy. No matter what you're trying to do. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, hmm. Anything else we should talk about? I, we should talk about <laughs> Stacy's project. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no? Uh, Let's talk about the 442. Uh, well... Well, by the way, Stacy is in the Hawaii Comic Book Alliance, by the way. <laughs> she also has a book. Stacy, what is your book called? Oh, God. It's called Journey of Heroes. It's about the 100th Battalion, 442nd Regimental Combat Team. It's a historically accurate comic book, which but, is, we're shooting a film. But it's done, it's a historic, uh, historically accurate comic book, but it's not done in your typical style. Right, it's chibi style. It's a... So, but we, but they're all real people, you know, and so we, I wanted people to 
uh, we don't have any B-roll for that. No. <laughs> but, well, so look at a look up but species. But anyway, as an example, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, Hawaii has so many important stories that we need to share. Yes. Um, and actually, maybe you can talk about that helmet that's sitting next to you. And, you know, like, where do we get our inspiration? And, okay. Um, so this helmet here is um, from a production that Stacy helped me produce. And we're, we're just kind of testing out the market to see what it is. Um, while I was doing Dragonfly, the project has come up several times and been shopped around, and we've always been this close to getting it picked up. And something usually happens, it prevents it or slows it down. This is what Hollywood does. Um, so we did a lot of work, and that is just still in limbo, I guess. In the meantime, um, I have a hard time sitting still. You guys can probably tell because my hands are moving a lot. And um, I, with these new conventions coming to town, um, not having a, a, re a new comic book, I started making these things for fun just to kind of keep me a little sane. And what I, I liked is like growing up in Hawaii, thanks to Jam Productions, they brought Kikaida, Kamen Rider V3, Gold Angels, that kind of stuff. We were, even though a lot of people in Hawaii aren't Japanese, we had the benefit of Japanese pop culture because of this company. And we grew up with these heroes and we made them our own. So this helmet that we got here just kind of... Um, came about because I wanted to make something and I wasn't uh, doing the 3D printing at the time so I wanted to see what else I come up with. So this helmet is basically made out of recycled items. These are old TV antennas. This is a kid's bug mask. The mouth is made out of um, foam. I don't know. Uh, I can't list <laughs> up and give you a shot of it but trust me on the inside it has Dora the Explorer. The helmet I found <laughs> on the on the side of the road. It's a little motorcycle helmet. So we did for fun we did a photo shoot of these things and the actors and stuff that I got involved at such a good time, they go, well, we should do something with this. So working with Stacy, and going on the lines of, let's do something fun, let's make life fun, and let's do something creative, and get together with a bunch of cool people, and, and have Cole a good time. Cole home for Christmas. Cole <laughs> Hawaii's uh, own Bruce Lee, and a ninja, if you guys watch, so you think you can dance, uh, was home in time for Christmas. So we incorporated um, the main character from the Dragonfly series, and we put it together with these characters. So on the fly, I had to come up with a story. Now, the reason why it's designed looking the way it is, is it's influenced by the Japanese series Kamen Rider. And my backstory is this is a bio uh, weapons filter mask uh, designed by a scientist who grew up loving these things. And it's just a little inside joke for him because creative people are crazy. And uh, so here, here. the story is about um, sure. Hawaii. Every, again, everything is set in Hawaii. It's about people from Hawaii. And it's set in Hawaii after a chemical, biochemical warfare thing goes wrong. The, the theory is because Hawaii has so many different races and we have so many different climates and we're um, on an island surrounded by the largest body of water, if they were to test something on us, uh, it's easy to contain. And that's exactly what happened. So Kamikaze is about the survivors of the infected or kind of zombie apocalypse thing. I, I wanted to make something based on uh, Kamen Rider, The Road Warrior, and The Walking Dead. So this is kind of my version of it. And we're, we're probably going to show a clip of that at the amazing Hawaii Comic Con this weekend. Cool. But again, this is all made out of rubbish, unlike the, uh, the Dragonfly <laughs> stuff. Well, not rubbish. <laughs> I mean, like... Well, recycled. They're, they're, some of the things are actually rubbish. I mean, like I said, I found this on the side of the road. So well, That's true. Right. So what you can do if you're creative... <laughs> you work with what you got, man. Keeps you out really of trouble. Really cool stuff. <laughs> yeah. So um, again, I guess like, people can catch you and the uh, Hawaii Comic Book Alliance. Right. That's you. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> At the amazing Hawaii Comic Con this weekend, October eighth and 9th. Cool. At the Hawaii Convention Center. Yeah, it's important to support. Oh, do we have to buy tickets? Yes, How do we get, a ticket? get the ticket information right here. Oh, wait, AmazingHawaiiComicCon.com. We can pass with our $40 Saturday only passes, $30 Sunday only $20. And there are also VIP tickets where you can meet uh, or get special paid things. But it's Kids Day, right? Kids Day on, oh, Kids 10 and Under free with paid adult. Correct. That's important, you know, got to keep the cakey yeah. engaged. And since it's so close to Halloween, you guys can all dress up and nobody's going to look at you weird. While you're in the convention, outside I can't guarantee it, but <laughs> while you're inside, no problem. It's always fun around the con area, right? Right. Yeah. I see a lot of people. Okay, well, that's a wrap for Stacy to the rescue this week and other people to the rescue. <laughs> Again, thanks so much, Sam Campos, for coming down and sharing a little bit about your creations and what it takes to be a creator in Hawaii and what you have to do to 
pay the bills and yeah, yeah. pay the bills remember but also pen. stay motivated <laughs> and <pen>. stay creative <laughs> yeah casey hoy all right thanks